was gone. Now I know that happiness goes on. That's where you sitting in my office and when the legislature was taking a vote on the cuts and I think about your talking everyone talked everyone had something to say in the assembly about how they were going to vote but when you spoke it, it brought tears to my eyes and I think I'm, I've lived through a lot of all of this stuff but it brought tears to my eyes because you spoke from your heart about what it meant to be a parent about what it meant to be a legislature a legislator about what it meant to you, what government's responsibility was to all the folks that we support. It you spoke from your heart, and that's a lot different than speaking from knowledge of what's going on or the way we think we're supposed to think. You thought what you thought because it was right, and we probably won't have anybody do that again for us. I think for a while. When well, the attempts to cut funding didn't stop, and the field itself was under assault, it was then that Harvey said, enough, no more. This will not happen. And it didn't. Not only that he was able to lead the entire New York State legislature to take that stand, and everyone who understands New York State government knows that that is truly no small feat. So why will Harvey be remembered? Well, Harvey will be remembered because he taught us that a single voice spoken with sincerity and passion can drown out the forces that were brought to harm to the supports of the church. He'll be remembered for speaking out with such respect and true admiration for the direct service professionals that carry out our organization's mission. He'll also be remembered for speaking out against abuse and neglect no matter where it may occur. Okay, and this is, uh, let me just introduce our second speaker. This is Marisol Gerthius, who's the advocacy coordinator at UCP Suffolk and advisor to the State Advocacy Network for New York State. Hello, my I am Sean Nitz, I am a grassroots presenter, an NCI interviewer, and the first recipient of the Erwin Swint, Sermon, Swint, how do you say Erwin Swint's Self-Advocate of the Year Award from Sandy's, Long Island. I am here today with my friend and longtime self-advocate leader, Marisol Getsius. Say again? Okay. Who is the advocacy assistant of UCP Suffolk as well as an advisor to the Self-Advocacy Association of New York State. In the past, where I lived, I didn't have a lot of control. I wasn't able to make my choices. If I continue to advocate for myself, breaking ground and teaching people new things. Today I have more freedom, choice, my own, choose my own apartment. Wow, how things have changed in my life. Sandy and self-advocacy and self-directed services have changed my life for the better. Because of this, I understand the important role of advocacy to support people of all skills and abilities, whether they choose traditional or self-directed services, living independently or with the support of an agency. Because of many experience in family care, group living, and advocacy, I understand the importance and support of great men like Harvey Weisenberg, who has dedicated his life to help people like me and my friends to be Acknowledge, and respected, and safe. It is with great honor that we represent thousands of self-advocate leaders statewide, support your sanity to present you with the certificate of acknowledgement for your hard work and dedication supporting people with development disabilities, to policy advocacy and belief that all people should be treated with dignity and respect. We present you with this certificate and these gifts with the pin that says, together we are stronger, as you will not only be rem remembered as a great advocate for yourself, your family, and our community, but also as a shining example of what a self-advocate leader is. Speak up for yourself and others. We welcome you as a, an honorary member of our club.
Congratulations, thank you, and God bless you. I, I just heard something. I have a little treat. I want to just do a little impersonation of Yogi Bear for you. Is that okay? Hey, hey, Harvey. It's Yogi Bear. Hey, Harvey, it's Yogi Bear. Thank you for helping people with some advocates. Yogi Bear loves you. I had a sing. Today's really a very special day. The most important things in life really don't cost money. The most valuable thing you can have is success. And what is success? Success in our life and in my family is the fact that when you achieve being able to help another person or people, the thank yous that you get is an indication of what life success is really all about. Today, we have people who come all over the state of New York. Agencies, staff people, lobbyists who work to help legislation to be passed. For those who have no voice in government, their voice is going to be heard. These are the people that have stepped up to be able to have the success legislatively to provide a quality of life, decency, and health care for people who cannot advocate for themselves and that families will have an opportunity to be able to know and feel comfortable in knowing that their children are going to be cared for. 
direct caregivers, staff, children, residents, and we're also going to have a, a privilege of watching some of our children who years ago were sitting in a facility, probably in a wheelchair, strapped in, looking at a blank wall. Of course, that's what happened in Ricky's past life. But today, they're going to be here singing and dancing because of the, te the technology today and the ability to focus on what our children can do and not what they can't do. So, Ellen and I, as parents of Ricky, feel that God blessed us. He has given us so much happiness, and we have an opportunity to be able to share that with so many people. The people that are here today are the real heroes of our society. People who have a difficult challenge in their life. No, we're okay. But yeah, a challenge in their life, but are out advocating and speaking to those who can't speak for themselves. And because of everybody's combined effort, like one big family, we've had success, and we're here to celebrate the successes that we've had, especially up in Albany in the past 25 years. So we're grateful to the people that are here. They think they're honoring me, but today is my opportunity to honor them and thank them for the happiness that they gave to me and so many people. Over 125,000 residents and facilities in the state of New York, which really means we're talking to or for about a half a million people who have benefited from the efforts of the people that are here today to provide the resources that are necessary. You want to say? No, I echo your sentiments. Hey, Ricky! Hey. Hey. <laughs> Ricky can't speak, but he's very happy to be here. And he knows he's amongst his peers and parents and friends. As I said before, look at the family that's present today, and it'll put a smile on your face. When you really think about where we came from many years ago, to 50 years ago or more, from institutions to finding out that we have our children who can sing, dance, and enjoy the quality of life because we have dedicated people who care and love our people. We have to love each other, but we also have to have our voices heard. And that's why we're here today. I'm here today to say thank you to all these people that are going to be present from every agency for all the good they have done in helping me to be successful in getting things done up in the world. So look at God bless this world. Come on, get some sun. I have a child, and nobody else can say this. We have a child that never did anything wrong.